It's a simulator model mm -hmm. that projects out all the way um, into the future year of 2100, what our global temperature rise will be. The team from MIT and mm -hmm. Climate Interactive, they've been working on this, developing this model for years now. This graph has 18 different major levers mm -hmm. and, um, you know, bucketed into, as you can see, the different categories major, yeah sectors like right. where's our energy come from because that's actually how do we how do so we use our, our energy or yeah. what are we using it for yeah so our major like transport and industries and buildings that are the greatest source of the uses as you said and you know behind this is basically a super complex web of formulas right. system dynamics formulas like thousands of formulas and data points and what you have here is the only global dynamic model that shows you the entire perspective of, you know, where global warming will be and what are the major factors mm -hmm. that could actually influence our path to global warming. So this right here is basically the recipe for human survival. Exactly. So one of the scariest things about climate change is not being able to grasp the extent of this monster that is climate change. Yeah. But if we can start to wrap our heads around it, mm -hmm. right? It's it's still a problem of, you know, epic proportions. But you know, oh, this is what it would take. Nobody really knows. Like, this is the only model that can really help you answer that question. Well, how do you get there? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. what are the... Because a lot of different aspects of, of yeah. changing our behavior yep. that we're going to have to do. Like, what exactly would it take? Sure. And uh, where it currently is on trajectory to hit 4.2 degrees increase. If we make no major changes from our current status quo right. path into the future, we're projected to hit that based right. on how much population and energy consumption, everything. Um, average 4.2 yeah. temperatures degrees Celsius increase by 2100. Yeah. And that is actually a really bad future. Basically, um, we can't um, have a sustainable society that's stable politically. Right, um, right. And so, <clears throat> you know, the international goal is to to mitigate... Two degrees? Yeah, to keep it under two degrees, according to the Paris Agreement. Mm -hmm. And actually, there's a lot of people who are saying we should actually keep it under 1.5 degrees because yeah. the difference between two degrees and 1.5 is actually pretty drastic, like hundreds of millions of people, and especially the vulnerable population. It's industry. really important to know which levers are going to actually change something yeah. versus which which aren't yeah. or or even good mix of levers and you know combination of levers yep. so i'll and I, why don't you kind of have some fun sure. playing with it so what the team has done is created a really beautiful dashboards and they will be providing this tool to the public for public access so right. anybody could actually you um access this model mm -hmm. simulator model and Right, so the fact that it's user friendly is very, very important because I think that we you would want as many people as possible to, to really dive in here yeah. and start to understand all of the things we can do yep. to lower the temperature. So, so this is something interesting that you showed me earlier. If all of transport electrified, that in and of itself would actually have very, very, very little impact. Mm -hmm. Because then the question is, what's the source of that electricity? Where did that electricity yeah. come from? But if we mixed the electrification of transport with the increase in renewables of our energy supply, those two things together yeah. had a 10% had a a boost. Okay, so how about you try to use this tool now and show me how you would get to two degrees, Perfect. a two degrees world. Let's do it, let's do it. So my sort of knee-jerk reaction is transportation, electrification. So I raise that, and then I see it didn't do much. So we've got to back that uh, electricity by uh, generation by renewable sources. So, so yeah. we're going to highly subsidize renewable energy. And I think that we should also put a hefty uh, price on carbon so that the polluters take a step back and say, you know, they need to figure out how to clean up their ways. And now we're at 2.9 degrees. So after that, that was <laughs> that was drastic. But what I did here is I said heavy subsidized renewables, very high carbon price. Well, maybe we can be more realistic. Uh, so I said very high, but not as high as it was. 
but but definitely okay. highly incentivized electrification. Mm -hmm. So you get three degrees, and what will it take to get to two degrees? Right, right. So so then I like to see what we can do on the carbon uh, sequestration side, and we're going to use some technology. So let's say medium growth. We're going to do some afforestation, and we're going to try to curb deforestation. And now I see what you're saying about it was easy to get down from 4.2 down to... Three. To three, but 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 then everything we're doing is just moving like decimal places. Yeah, and it's because we're running out of time. We're already so far into the tra trajectory towards two degrees that you've got ramp up time to get all these solutions in play, and you're running out of time to actually. We're and we're so we're talking about eighty years. We're talking about eighty years. A lot, a lot, a lot is going to have to change. Yeah, but in terms of we're already look at twenty twenty. We're already at one degrees mm -hmm. we're already over let's see we're already over one degree so so if building efficiency increases that does some that does some let's see if i can take renewables all the way to the edge where it's that's amazing to me that didn't even change from highly subsidized about halfway there to highly subsidized all the way there yeah, because I think with a very high carbon price and you already subsidizing renewables. It's kind of a redundancy. Yeah, it's like renewable already has, is already maxed out. And so we're taxing coal, which is very similar to a price on carbon. Let's say that nuclear becomes subsidized. So this isn't doing much. But again, now we're, now we're already really close to that. Two degrees, so I'm, I'm guessing that it's really hard to get those last couple decimal places. So let's say uh, population declines or or very little growth, <laughs> and so that hasn't done anything. Economic growth. Let's say that we can all live <laughs> with not having a new car in the next three years and just be, being comfortable and not oh, having to drive aggressive GDP growth. So. I think you're missing one, like one, one super big, critical one. Yeah, because right now all of this is mostly affecting Assuming, CO2. Right, all right. Sorry. So now we're gonna step in and bring in some new technology, and we're gonna say there's some breakthrough, and I didn't cut it. Look at that one. Methane. Yeah. And other gases. Right, from right. So, so everything was CO2, yeah. and of course there's many other uh, greenhouse gases. And that, that, that caught it, all right, so that had a deep impact. And of course, everybody talks about CO2, which is the, the most abundant, yeah. but not necessarily the, the harshest. Yeah. The carbon price actually makes a huge difference. Like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> carbon price is really big. Yeah, and it's interesting because what this model really shows is it's not always a thing that gets the most attention right that's actually most effective interesting yeah so you know how did you feel trying to get the two degrees worlds so i was really excited at the beginning i was really optimistic because going going at the beginning going from 4.2 to let's say three was was pretty quickly and it said look you know okay solar's growing exponentially and uh maybe if we just keep on this trajectory but then then uh so so the beginning was was a nice big drop but then what I found was that that last degree for going from, let's say, three degrees to two degrees is going to take a lot of work. And it's going to have to happen across a lot of different industries and sectors and, and politics and, and economies. So that looks like it's, uh, it's really going to require the whole world coming together and, yeah. and figuring it out. I think that the, the biggest impact that this has had on me is realizing um, how holistic and interdisciplinary what we're up against is, mm -hmm. you know, you read about uh, the accelerated deforestation in Brazil. Mm -hmm. That's really important. Mm -hmm. We realize uh, that that breakthroughs in technology can happen. That's that's really important. Um, maybe we need to try to move faster towards a, a price on on carbon. Uh, but it's it's really kind of realizing that there's no silver bullet. Exactly, there's no silver bullet, and that's there's actually like one of the main. Um, insights that this team, the Climate Interactive MIT team, likes to go out there with. Like, yeah. The main insight that we we gain from doing all this modeling is realizing there is no silver bullet. Yeah. Like we can't solve this without 
some changing like every industry and when, getting yeah. every industry involved in the solutions. All hands on deck. Yeah. Right. What, what I love about this is that it boils it all down to one number and that's increased temperature. And we can, we can see what, you know, variable things we can change in society to move that needle. That's the most important needle to move. Yep. Um, yeah, I think it, it really forces you to become goal oriented, mm -hmm. not just get, you know, caught up, which is so easy in the climate change, sure. you know, sort of discussion is to get caught up in all these technical details and discussions and minutia and or, or get or get really emotional exactly. and forget how to actually achieve those goals yeah like wait what is it that we're trying to achieve again okay two degrees yeah and what does it take okay right. let's like get back to that and you know mm -hmm. really look at the numbers and see you know what would it take and some of these so there's like it's hard to get under two degrees right but it's possible and there are multiple paths to doing the thing that people don't understand is change is not just a linear it's not just like oh what, each degrees is the same same amount of change when it comes to the impacts okay. it's sort of exponential because you get higher to temperature the ice caps melt that's less white surfaces reflecting yeah. light warmer waters everything becomes much worse and it accelerates yeah. the rate of change as well yeah um and people us as a society as well we become even more stressed and um, incapacitated in terms of addressing these problems. Mm -hmm. So not only do we have to try to, you know, prevent the problem from getting worse, but now we're we're trying to do it while the problem we're facing a lot more problems. Right. Yeah. Right. What What would you guys like to achieve? What would the creators of this model like to achieve? I think to share this information with people because I think. But in terms of like feedback from the world, I mean, what, 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 if you saw happen, would you say, okay, that's exactly what we wanted to happen? This actually impacting policy mm -hmm. and industry mm -hmm. decisions yeah. to get towards a plan to actually mitigate to two degrees. Everything is doable from a technical standpoint, as in, is it using just technology, not thinking about whether politicians will enact this or not? But do we have the technology to do it? Or do we have, you know, if we had all the will in the world, could we do this thing? Yeah. And, and this is all ra so, bounded so by realism or okay. realistic right. bounds. It, it, it doesn't require that aliens come to planet Earth and govern us and give us their tech and make us just stop in our tracks, everything we're doing. This is stuff that we can do ourselves. If we chose to. It's a, it's a, it's, it's kind of a moonshot because look, we're running out of time. You've got, you're talking it's about- It's so hard to shake people out of status yeah. quo. It's so hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard enough to live life in status quo, to say, okay, change everything about how you do just about everything mm -hmm. is, 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 is very difficult for, yeah. for most people to And you need these do. solutions and policies enacted at a global scale, meaning you need not just one country, but Everybody. every Everybody country in the world together. to do Everybody this. has to come yeah. together. And a lot of that has to do with because we already run out of so much time because we're right. already at one degree. So wow. you've got like right, such right, little right, window right. to make that change. That makes perfect sense. And even like when we, like all of these models are really- Sort of the momentum of all of our behavior for the last exactly. two, three hundred years. Like everything incorporates our best knowledge of how long things would take to ramp up too. So you can't just dial up renewables 100% like this. There is a yeah. transition period there's, there's and economies. all of that is incorporated. Yeah. So. So what do you think is the most powerful thing that this tool could do? Like if you, if it was, if you had this tool, what would you do with it? Bridging the gap between the concept of some terrifying problem that nobody knows how to solve. They just know it's a huge problem and, and being able to break it down. I mean, one of the, one of the principles we, have, we always learn in engineering is when you have a, a problem that's daunting, break it down into components mm -hmm. and then break that into subcomponents. Mm -hmm. and, and when you break problems into palatable sizes, then, then we can start wrapping our head around solutions. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that, that, that this kind of does that mm -hmm. because we say, okay, what's the problem? The problem is the temperatures are rising faster than we know how to control to a very destructive uh, place. Okay, these are how we can solve it. And mm -hmm. now we can start to say, which areas are going to be less uh, politically and economically painful for us to solve than others. Mm -hmm. and, and this allows us to figure out how to prioritize mm -hmm. so that we're not running in circles or governments aren't spending all their time talking about recycling. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, and tote bags where, where that's kind of cute and it gives us a good feeling, but we have to, we have to work really hard on not just having good feelings. Yep. We have to move away from the emotional side in reaction to climate change mm -hmm. and into uh, uh, an analytical scientific side of climate change mm -hmm. and, and, and connect that with politics. Mm -hmm. Right. If if politicians have a responsibility to say, let's figure out how to bring down the temperatures in a certain amount of time by a certain amount of, of temperature reduction, you have that requirement to do that. We can do that and we can move away from this scapegoat that, that politicians love that just say, well, I'm no scientist. <laughs> so I have no evidence at any of this stuff. But if this stuff is really accepted yeah. and, and readily available and, and, and very user-friendly, um, we can start working towards You could test benchmarks. your plans, essentially. Like, oh, yeah. well, what if we did this, that, that? Is that a viable plan yeah. for helping us to reduce global warming? Exactly. We're launching it, you know, by the end of July, hopefully. Okay. And then the MIT and Climate Interactive team will be on a mission to really share this model far and wide. So this isn't launched yet? Yeah, this is a beta version. So in the future, these, this model and this, all these tools yeah. will be made available at our website, climateinteractive.org. Okay. And you know, the website will give you access to basically the model and Amazing. all the documents and tools that we have. Amazing. Climateinteractive.org. Climateinteractive.org. Yep. Got it.